Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Lecture number 52. So, uh, in the last lecture, we derived the Langdon's bracket, and therefore, the problem we have been working with, we call this as the general orbit. Per Actually, I wrote general perturbation theory, but we are because working with the orbit, so we call this as the general orbit perturbation theory and using Langdon's bracket method because the Langdon's bracket is appearing there, and the Langdon's was the person who did this work and on his name this is called the Langdon's bracket and especially why we are calling this as the varying parameter because the parameters your c1 c2 these are the oscillating parameters they vary with time so in the uh, last lecture uh, wherever we finish we need to uh, ok uh, I was uh, trying to uh, go into the properties of the Langrange bracket properties of the properties of the Langrange bracket this I wanted to tell in the last lecture, but it is a better it will take it may take little more time. So, it is a better to do here. Now, the first property I list as property number 1 C j comma C k this is immediately evident from the determinant which we have written do x by do c j do x by do c k and do x dot by do c j do x dot by do c k. So, this quantity on the left hand side this LHS this is equal to plus similarly for the y term dou y by dou c j dou y by dou c k dou y dot by dou c j and dou y dot by dou c k and one more term for the z we have to write. So, this is your left hand side. So, what we can see that the quantity let us take only the first one this can be written as dou x by dou c j times dou x dot by dou c k as we have written earlier also from this part we came to this one, but this is easy to remember as compared to this one. And this can be written as let us say this is part A, this is B and this is C. So, A equal to then we can take the minus sign outside and write this as dou x by dou c k times dou x dot by dou c j minus dou x dot by dou c k and dou x by 
dou C j. So, immediately you can see that if I do it for all of them. Okay. So, what this quantity is? This is the quantity C k comma C j and only the x part. Similarly, we will have so uh, therefore, in this place we can replace this with minus C k C j and only x part this can be replaced by minus C k C j only y part and this can be replaced with minus C k C j only z part. So, what does this, this imply then? So, this implies that C j C k after summing all of them the x part y part and the z part all of them are coming with a minus sign. So, this becomes equal to C k C j. So, I will write this part here C j C k what we are doing that we are writing this as C k C j the x part C k C j the y part and uh, minus C k C j the z part. So, this is the summation the minus sign can be taken as the common. So, this will result in C k comma C j. So, this is the first property of the Langrange bracket. The second property C j comma C j this equal to 0 and that we can check immediately with this. If you replace k with j, so immediately you can see that all these quantities will vanish. So, in this case C j comma C j this will be equal to So, one part I am just writing here dou x by dou c j dou x by dou c j and dou x dot by dou c j dou x dot by dou c j. And similarly, the second term and the third term. So, what this quantity is? This is dou x by dou c j times dou x dot by dou c j minus dou x by dou c j times dou x dot by dou c j. Similarly, for the y term and for the z term. So, therefore, all of them it is a 0, this gives a 0 and thus we get the second property. The third property is of uh, great importance in solving the problem which states that dou by dou t dou c j comma dou c k this equal to 0. C j c k depends on just the osculating elements
So, Langrange bracket is not a function of time, this is what it says and it is a very important. Now, one more thing we need to say like uh, before we take to this property, I can state here if itself. this C j C k I it can be given j can varies from 1 to 6 and k also varies from 1 to 6. So, that means, it is a 6 by 6 matrix. So, let us say that each of the bracket we are writing as in short notation C 1 1, C 1 2 to C 1 6 and similarly from here C 6 1 to C 6 6. So, each of them it is a representing Langrange bracket. So, in view of this second property, your diagonal elements are all 0, because C 1 1, C 2 2 from this one you can see that all of them will be equal to 0, all this quantity will be 0, C 3 3, C 4 4 equal to 0, C 5 5 equal to 0 and C 6 6 this equal to also 0. So, your diagonal elements they vanish. So, total there are 36 elements here in this place. So, out of 36 once the diagonal elements are 0. So, 36 minus 6 only 30 needs to be estimated. The 30 Langrange brackets need to be estimated because the 6 are 0. In view of the first property which we have written here in this place we can see that the Langrange bracket C for uh, suppose we write this as just C 1 3 and on this side this will be C minus C 3 1. Okay. So, in view of the first property this says that the terms on this side the elements of this uh, matrix on this side it will be negative of elements on this side. So, if you see uh, if I write it like say for 3 by 3 matrix if I write, so it, it appears like this. Suppose, this is minus 5, so this will be plus 5. If this is 4, so this will be minus 4. If this is minus 3, so this will be 3. So, this forms a skew symmetric matrix. skew symmetric matrix. So, out of 30 then because of on the elements on one side the elements on this side are just negative of elements on the other side which uh, elements on this side just negative of this and therefore, immediately we can see that we just need to estimate only evaluate only 15 brackets. Needs to be evaluated. So, out of 36 we just need to evaluate 15 brackets to solve this problem and this eases the process a lot. And the third property we have to list which will help us in the solving the problem. So, I will do this part just here. say if this quantity if I write this as j. So, this implies dou j by dou, dou t equal to 0 I have to prove. Okay. So, let c j comma c k we write this as p comma q.
and j we know of course, j equal to j x plus j y plus j z, because you have to take derivatives like the dou x by dou c j, dou y by dou c j and dou z by dou c j and similarly with respect to k also and uh, in addition the x dot y dot z dot are also involved. So, dou j, j x by dou j t this quantity will be dou by dou t and j we are writing in terms of p and q. So, therefore, it is just for convenience okay. there is nothing to do with I, I can equally write in terms of j and k, but writing in terms of p and q at least uh, there are four symbols here involved, here only two symbols are involved, so, that is why I am writing like that. So, this gets reduced like this dou x by dou q instead of p uh, c j and c k we are writing just p and q. And of course, dou x by dou j by dou t this is dou j x by dou t plus dou j y by dou t dou j z by dou t this equal to 0. This is what we are going to prove. differentiating so the see for once we differentiate the quantities okay well let me go step by step rather than jumping we have taken just the partial derivative okay. we need to go on the next page ok can we now one thing uh, I would like to mention here you must be aware of those things dou y dou t dou x y dou p this is equivalent to writing the exchange of the operator. So, we can write this as dou y dou p x dot. So, if we follow this notation so immediately we can see that the quantity here gets reduced to dou x dot by dou p dou x dot by dou p and then the next quantity to dou x dot by dou q plus dou x by dou p and dou, dou x uh, similarly here we can right here in this place this t 
instead of writing x dot we will write in terms of x double dot. So, dou x by dou p dou x double dot by dou q dou x by dou p and dou x double dot by dou q dou x by dou p dou x double dot now the next term this term we are taking. So, here this is dou x by dou x double dot by dou p times dou x by dou q minus dou x double dot by dou p times dou x by dou q minus dou x dot by dou p minus dou x dot by dou p and this term then gets dou x dot by dou q. And immediately we can recognize that this term and this term they are the same with opposite sign and therefore, cancel out. Thus, we have dou j x by dou t now x dot is the quantity we have written as only if we write in terms of say r double dot we are writing for the perturbation free orbit or the oscillating orbit as minus r double dot equal to minus del u. Okay. So, in terms of x double dot this will become x double dot equal to minus dou u by dou x. Similarly, for y and z it can be written. So, therefore, this gets reduced to dou x by dou p times dou by dou q exchange of uh, variables this is minus minus that gets plus and this is square is not there because we have u q is where u q is nothing but dou u by dou q. So, what does this imply? We can write it properly dou u by dou u p by dou x times dou x by dou q minus dou u q by dou x times this is not dot product it is a just multiplication because it is not a vector. So, and if we do this operation for all of them. So, therefore, if we add for all the terms like dou j y by dou t. Similarly, we can get the terms for the we need to evaluate dou j by, by dou t and dou j z by dou t and the, along the same line it can be done. So, this will yield us dou u p by dou x times dou x by 
dou q plus dou up by dou y times dou y by dou q along the same line we have to write for the z dou q and the terms corresponding to this then we have to also use. So, this will come with a minus sign minus dou u q by dou x oh, here we are, I am not able to write Okay, I will continue here on this side with minus sign dou u q by dou x times dou x by dou p plus dou u q by dou y times dou y by dou p by dou z times dou z by dou p and this we need to work out. So, what this quantity gets reduced this quantity gets reduced to dou u p by we go on the next page so therefore do j x by do t plus do j y by do t plus this can be written as from here the first term is nothing but from the partial dif differential concept this turns out to be do u p by do q do u p by do q and the second term this term this turns out to be do u q by do p. So, minus do u q by do p this term is nothing but do by do q and already we have written u do u p u p equal to do u by do p. this equal to 0. So, therefore, dou j by dou t which we have written as dou by dou t c j comma c k which we expressed in terms of p and q this quantity equal to 0 which is the third property. and these three properties will help us solving this problem. Lagrange bracket can be evaluated at any point in the orbit. Okay. Now, uh, we need to uh, discuss some more thing.
say we have uh, we, we are aware that we have parameters a e theta i small omega and capital omega these are the six parameters and this we are representing as c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 and c6 so here in this case in the true orbit case what is happening that d a is not a constant but rather d a by d t this is a finite quantity this simply implies that it is a varying and now in whether in the or this uh, while the uh, planetary perturbation is present so at that time whether it is a changing or not changing it is a matter of time we will uh, explore that okay. which quantities are more important uh, uh, dominate and which quantities are small so all these things can be explored like uh, for one example i will give you the case of the sun synchronous satellite where the satellite is always facing the sun uh, its orbit is always facing the sun the plane of the orbit so uh, as the sun is here and the earth is rotating in the orbit so orbit is say like this and you always want your orbit to face here in this direction so now it goes here in this place earth goes here in this place if it remains parallel means it will not be pointing toward the sun okay so to point toward the sun it must rotate like this okay. and this nodal line rotation it results from the non spherical shape of the earth rather than being a sphere it's a oblate it's a oblate like this and because of this this nodal line can rotate okay so this is one part the orbital perturbation where d omega by dt this is a finite quantity this is not equal to zero and it has to rotate at a particular rate so that in one year it goes by turns by 360 degree and this corresponds to a particular angle of inclination for particular altitude you need to have a particular inclination so all these things we will explore it's a too early to discuss all these issues okay but here these are the six parameters which we are representing like this and and we are looking for how these parameters are changing with time if the perturbation is present okay so to our the cj ck the terms the brackets which we are taking so we will have the terms like the first one is c11 which is equal to 0 the short notation we are writing like this this is c1 c1 we are writing as c11 the next one c1 c2 which we will write as c12 as i stated earlier so this way we will have this matrix okay and in this matrix we will let us say we write it like this c11 c12 to c16 similarly c31 in mid between we have c21 all those things will go there c22 and here c32 c33 we divide it into this four quadrants like this similarly this part we write as c14 c15 c16 c35 c36 c37 
C four four, C four five, and C four six. And the last one, the fifth one, I am skipping. Uh, C six one, C six two, C six three, C six four, C six five, and C six six. So this, let us say, that I represent this as A and this as B. Okay. So this part then, because of the Lagrange bracket property, it can be written by minus B. And this we will write as C. Out of this, these quantities are zero, as I discussed earlier. These are zero. So I need to evaluate in this quadrant only how many terms. It's a skew symmetric, and therefore one, two, three. Only one, two, three quantities are to be estimated here. Here in this part, in this also only three. So three needs to be determined here. Three needs to be determined here. And how many here in this part in the B? Total nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine here. And as we get this, so immediately with minus sign, this is available. So this part we do not have to work. Okay, only this, this, and this. Here also because it's a skew symmetric, so C five one, C five two, C five three, C five four, C five five, and C five six. So C four four, C five five, C six six. These are zero. Only all of diagonal terms are present and. Because of the skew symmetry, so uh, these terms, these terms will be negative of these terms here. So only three needs to be determined here. Three needs to be determined here. So three plus three and plus nine from this place. So that makes it fifteen. So as I stated earlier, only fifteen brackets we need to evaluate, and rest we forget. So. And one more part. Let us say that a e theta and uh, capital omega small omega i we write as alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, alpha five, alpha six, or either c one, c two, c three, c four, c five, c six. Okay, this way. So instead of doing this, what we will do that we will write a e theta as alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and capital omega, small omega i as beta one, beta two, beta three. So that our indexing will be only over one to three. That I will show you in the next lecture. What uh, what does this imply? And uh, So th this will ease our process. Okay. Because you can see here in this bracket, uh, only one, two, three terms are there. One, two, three, three uh, rows, uh, three columns, and three rows are there in this B. Okay. So it's a better to replace in terms of one, two, three. So we do not have to carry um, the uh, tags like the four, five, six. And uh, next time I will uh, show you. so we stop here okay thank you very much